Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bahaginan Research Forum, specifically on chefs in curatorial practice, curating during times of transition and change. Together with us, the moderator and host for this session is Ma'am Tessa Maria Guazon. Tessa Maria Guazon is an educator, writer, and curator based in Manila, the Philippines. Her curatorial and research interests center on contemporary art practices in Southeast Asia and arts mediation of the public sphere. Her most recent research and curatorial projects include the Southeast Asian Neighborhoods Network, CNET, organized by the International Institute of Asian Studies in Leiden, the Netherlands, and funded by the Luce Foundation in New York. The traveling exhibition Notes for Tomorrow, organized by the ICI International, and the Philippine Pavilion at the 58th Venice Art Biennale. She has been invited to the interlocutors program of the 10th Asia Pacific Pacific Triennial organized by the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art in Brisbane, Australia, and to the curatorial team of the 2021 Asian Art Biennial at the National Museum of Fine Arts in Taichung, Taiwan. She received the University of the Philippines Artist Award from 2016 to 2019 and 2013 to 2015, and the Nippon Foundation Asian Public Intellectuals Fellowship from 2013 to 2014. She was a researcher in residence at the Fukuoka Asian Art Museum in Japan in 2017. Her essays and reviews have been published in anthologies, academic journals, and exhibition catalogs. Her recent writings include chapters for the book Adhika on the University of the Philippines Diliman Art Collections and forthcoming book chapters for an anthology on art and vernacular resilience and food, network, food relief networks and artist initiatives in Manila during the pandemic. May we call in Professor Guazon. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for the introduction, Louis. Uh, I would like to introduce the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters, University of the Philippines de Liman, Professor Jimuel C. Naval. He will welcome us to this afternoon's event. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tessa. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Good afternoon to, hello, yeah. Okay. Good afternoon to everyone. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the Cal Bahaginan uh, for artists and curators. This is the fourth, I think this is the fourth, no, uh, Jason. This is the fourth in the series of conversations on how we have been coping academically with the demands of the pandemic and how we manage to stay afloat and productive in this period of change and transition. For this afternoon's Bahaginan, we are so lucky to have with us these uh, three distinguished speakers from our Asian neighbors. Mr. Tayeba Begum Lipi, a multi-media artist from Bangladesh. Uh, Ms. Anushka Rahendra, a curator and art uh, writer based in uh, New Delhi. And of course, uh, Mr. Takamori Nabu is an independent curator who is currently based in, uh, I think in Taiwan. No? I'm sure you'll be interested to hear about how our guests, artists and curators have navigated their ways into the pandemic how COVID-19 has hit their side of cultures and the arts with their attendant platforms and how eventually they emerge with new approaches and models of engagement. This uh, promises to be a new start of engagement as we hopefully you know, 
enter a new phase in this global health crisis. It's my hope that uh, this will continue as an active engagement with our colleagues in the region. You know, this pandemic has alienated the curatorial practices and it's continuously haunts its existence of its being, well, of its very being, the interactions between the artists, curators, and the audience. However, the visual arts community thrive and use alternative means like this bahaginan <clears throat> to render the practice very much alive. I would like to thank the Department of Art Studies for bringing us all together for this Bahaginan episode, particularly Associate Professor Tessa Wasson for moderating this event. And of course, to the DAS chairperson, dito ba si Sophie? Sophie Guillermo. And of course, siyempre, kasama ang laging punong abala, Associate Dean, Dr. Jason uh, Petras. Finally, I am confident that the future of Asian curatorial service after COVID-19 is bright. No? I hope the Bahaginan series may be able to critically enhance this future. And I wish for everyone a productive post, shall I say, shall I say post-COVID curatorial engagement. Maraming salamat, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat mula the College of Arts and Letters. Padayon. Maraming salamat. Uh, thank you very much, Dean Naval. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us in this afternoon's Bahaginan Research Forum. The Research Forum of the College of Arts and Letters was launched in 2016. Uh, and it's a core component of the College of Arts and Letters research agenda. It is presented in various formats, including thematic-based discussions like the one we are having this afternoon. Uh, my screen moves. So. And we would like to thank again the University of the Philippines Office of Initiatives for Culture and the Arts, the College of Arts and Letters, especially Dean Jimuel C. Naval, Associate Dean Jason Petras, and the Department of Art Studies, um, especially our chair, Professor Sofia Guillermo, and uh, colleague, Mark Louis Luge, and uh, our graduate student, L.K. Rigor, for help with organizing and taking care of all the technical uh, details. So I thought to title the event this afternoon uh, as the following, Shifts in Curatorial Practice, Curating During Times of transition and change. I thought to title it this way because I feel most of us are rethinking our life work and practice, especially now that we have experienced profound changes caused by the pandemic and similar chaos unfolding in the world. But what happens if we, our contexts of practice or our practices are often beset by crisis? And it's not just, uh, I'm not just specifically referring to the pandemic. So this is a question and related ones that we will discuss and unpack this afternoon alongside colleagues Nobuo and um, Anushka. So uh, there is a slight change in the program. Artist Tayeba Begum Lipi is currently on field work and she has problems accessing internet from where she are. So uh, from where she is rather. So she's outside of Dhaka and. Uh, on her behalf, Anushka will later speak about her practice. So the discussion will revolve around curatorial practices that crises have shaped. And uh, I'm, I'm not just, as mentioned, it's not just the pandemic I'm referring to. Our speakers will reflect on projects they realized during the pandemic and similar uh, emergencies. What challenges did they face in organizing projects? Uh, in contexts beset by crisis, what new curatorial approaches and exhibitionary formats were developed for such projects? What do they think are the most productive ways to engage the art world publics within this context of constraint? 
the pandemic hit the art world and its attendant platforms, worsening an already wobbly infrastructure for culture and the arts. As contemporary art curators, what new models of engagement can we propose for being and working with others? This and related uh, issues will shape the conversation this afternoon. And I invite everyone to take part in the conversation. You may send your questions by way of uh, Zoom, the chat box. And if you're watching from Facebook by way of the comment thread, um, and if you're watching on YouTube by way of the comments section uh, on YouTube. So I would like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, uh, by the way, I've had a great opportunity to work with Lipi, Anushka, and Nobuo on exhibition projects. So this is sort of a reunion for all of us. So I'd like to introduce Nobuo Takamori, our first speaker. Takamori Nobuo is a Taiwanese independent curator of Japanese descent. He is currently based in Taipei, Taiwan. Takamori works, worked as the chief curator of the 2021 Asian Arts Biennial Fantasmapolis, organized by the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts. It aimed uh, to describe futurism and uh, a perspective from science fiction within Asian contemporary art. He is also assistant professor at the Taipei National University of the Arts. For more than a decade, Takamori's curatorial work and research projects aim to evoke the hidden linkage between Taiwan and Southeast Asia with practical exchange projects for uh, interaction, to encourage the interaction of contemporary art from both these parts of the world. Takamori's notable projects include Post Actitude uh, 2011 at the Ex Teresa Arte Actual in Mexico City, South Country, South of Country from 2012 at Zero Station in Ho Chi Minh City and Hao Space in Tainan, Taiwan International Video Art Exhibition in 2014, The Return of Ghosts at the Honga Museum in Taipei, is uh, I or is slash inland. Mongolian Taiwanese Contemporary Art Exchange Project from 2018 at Art Space 976 Plus in Ulan Batar and the Kwandu Museum of Fine Arts in Taipei, and The Secret South from Cold War Perspective to Global South in a museum collection, uh, his most recent exhibition before the Biennial in 2020 at the Taipei Fine Arts Museum. Uh, let us welcome Takamori Nobuo. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks the introduction from uh, Tessamania Kwazont, and I am very uh, appreciate uh, the invitations from uh, Bahakinan uh, Forum. Right. So uh, before I start, I should uh, share my screen first. Okay. I think everybody can uh, sort uh, my slideshow. Okay, so uh, to date, uh, my titles of uh, the presentations is Contemporary Art Curation Towards Local Light Aid. And uh, there's a lot of uh, discussions, uh, especially in Asian contemporary art scenes that uh, discuss it about how the art circles can uh, engage uh, the ideas such as local, local light aid and how can we uh, a bridge the uh, communications uh, between the art circles and the local. So uh, uh, I decided uh, to reply uh, these uh, questions by uh, by an exception which I ha has been uh, curated in 2020. So uh, this exception was uh, co-curated with another very uh, uh, talented uh, young curator Zhuang Dongqiao in Taiwan, and um, and uh, the exhibition itself was organized by Tainan Art Museum. Tainan is um, is a, a historical city, uh, 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 an ancient uh, capital uh, located at the south of the Taiwan. So the atmosphere uh, basically is uh, very different compared to the capital uh, Taipei. And uh, the titles of the exceptions is Everyday Life and Landscape of the Island, 
uh, butternuts, bananas, sugarcane, and palm. So palm is the palm trees. Okay, so uh, the basic idea of this exhibition, uh, which uh, discusses uh, between me and John Dong Chow, is that uh, we want to uh, set out uh, this exhibition as kind of uh, examples that uh, to that uh, to prove the contemporary arts is not only belongs to the uh, athletes uh, art circles but it could also be kind of an educational uh, communicational uh, tool that could towards uh, the general public, especially the public uh, which uh, uh, habitated uh, outside of the uh, uh, metropolis like uh, Taipei. So uh, we decided to uh, select uh, the planets, especially the uh, tropical planets, which can be seen uh, every day uh, in Taiwan, and uh, people are very familiar uh, with these four uh, planets, including butternuts, bananas, sugar canes, and palm tree. But uh, these four uh, planets, uh, although they are very kind of uh, everyday uh, landscape, which you can uh, uh, find uh, everywhere on the islands and in, even in the cities, but uh, all of these four uh, planets, they are all represented uh, certain historical or industrial backgrounds of the uh, island Taiwan. So for example, uh, the butternut is a very traditional uh, and important uh, planet which related to astronomian traditions. So we can uh, we, we all know uh, in Luzon Island, uh, the indigenous uh, tribe, they also uh, consume uh, the butternuts as kind of uh, tools uh, to communicate with the uh, ancestral spirits. So we have uh, similar traditions here. Uh, and the uh, banana and sugar canes, uh, they have been introduced and has been uh, printed uh, because the uh, colonization. So the uh, colonized powers, uh, as Taiwan was uh, the colony of Japan, uh, the bananas and sugar canes uh, became a very crucial and very important uh, planets in the tropical planetations, which uh, on the one hand, initiates uh, the uh, industrialized of Taiwan, but on the other hand, it's also limited uh, the developing of agriculture in Taiwan. And the last uh, planet, a palm tree, is one of the uh, most interesting uh, examples because uh, the colonial uh, government of Japan, they introduced the palm trees from Hawaii to Taiwan. It's not for the economical or industrial purpose, but for the uh, landscape aesthetic. They starting to uh, print the palm tree everywhere inside the downtown of the Taiwanese city because they think the palm trees uh, make the city of Taiwan become more exotic and it could make the landscape of the cities uh, more related to a uh, kind of the imaginations of the uh, South uh, Island. Okay, so in these exceptions, we want to mix things, uh, the uh, uh, educational backgrounds, including the historical background. For example, uh, we introduce uh, uh, during the colonial times, the banknotes of Taiwan, uh, they depict uh, the butternut tree at the back, at the back side of the notes. And during the war times, the Pacific War, because the lack of the material of the real paper, so the government decided to print the bank notes on the sugar cane paper, which was kind of a replacement uh, material. And uh, in these exceptions, we all we studied uh, from uh, the uh, 19th century uh, photographed uh, by an um, Englishman, uh, John Thompson. Uh, he's kind of a traveling uh, photographer to show in uh, the natural landscape of the island of Formosa. And uh, by his uh, perspectives, we will note uh, before the industrial lights and before the colonizations. In fact, uh, 
uh, only the butternut is the original uh, planet which already existed uh, on the island. But the sugarcane, the bananas, is kind of uh, a modernization, the, the result of the modernization. And the museum itself is a very interesting uh, venue because uh, the China Museum of Arts was located in a colonial uh, building. It was a police station of China City. So uh, we we are also trying to reflect uh, that kind of uh, idea as the uh, early modernization and colonization. In this exhibition, uh, we invited a lot of uh, young uh, artists who has Basics uh, locally here, and they try to use their own different uh, methodologies uh, to engage uh, the uh, art, art uh, representation or practicement, uh, which related uh, to this false uh, planet. For example, uh, artist Di Luomei, uh, she used uh, the sketch paper and the pencil uh, to sketch uh, the, the big uh, palm trees and uh, the and, and she used the exact uh, scales uh, to cut and make uh, this paper becomes a kind of a paper model and to represent it uh, inside uh, the center of the uh, colonial uh, chamber. So we can sort uh, her work, uh, which is a kind of a very interesting way to uh, depict the planet. And uh, we also invite uh, the young artists with uh, several different uh, methodologies. For example, uh, Chen Chao, uh, he used the sugar canes uh, to blow in uh, the, the alcoholic uh, sugar canes uh, wine. So it's a very interesting uh, lot in the museum. We are not only trying to uh, represent uh, the artwork which uh, depict the shape of the planet, but uh, we want to use this change uh, to uh, communicate with the audience that uh, uh, how this uh, planet could be uh, possible to, or available uh, to transform into a certain kind of the form. And uh, as I mentioned, the sugar canes uh, play a very important uh, part of the uh, early modernization of Taiwan, which means uh, the early industrial buildings like factories, uh, which built uh, during the colonization period in Taiwan, was uh, initially work as the uh, sugar cane factory. So artist uh, Chen Yingting, uh, she tried to correct things uh, the mechanical uh, parts or the mechanical uh, tools uh, from this historical factory and use uh, the paper uh, to remodel uh, uh, the uh, historical mechanical uh, parts. And uh, the artist uh, Luo, Yu, Luo, Luo Yijun, uh, she used a very progressive uh, materials as uh, part of her work. Uh, she directly used the uh, banana. Uh, of course, the banana uh, has been uh, processed uh, by uh, very special uh, uh, processings. Uh, she need to dry uh, the skin of the banana first. And she used uh, this banana as a kind of uh, material to uh, constitute as the, uh, uh, as the uh, uh, in installation and the painting as well. And the painting itself uh, showing uh, the uh, migrants uh, from the Southeast Asia. So, so both the material and also uh, the contents of the picture uh, try to reflect uh, our major uh, topic. Okay, all right. So uh, the artist uh, Takahiko Suzuki's work uh, try to show in uh, how the modern uh, stored uh, uh, selling the butternuts uh, by kind of uh, uh, miniature uh, model. And uh, in this exhibition, we also try to borrow uh, or, or try to learn uh, the corrections from the museums. So the uh, audience, they can understand uh, how this food, the, how this uh, planet related to their early life, uh, how it has been represented in the traditional uh, market. And uh, we are also focusing on the uh, 
uh, uh, histories of the uh, uh, paintings. So we show in the painters from the different generations, uh, from uh, the generation of the 1970s until the most youngest generations, and repeated it uh, to show in uh, how these four uh, planets uh, has been represented in a very different uh, uh, methods on their canvas. So we can uh, we can note uh, the, a pioneer uh, painter. Uh, the Junxian, how he showing uh, the bananas on his painting, and you can direct direct his uh, seeds. Uh, he just returns a very good bananas uh, on the canvas, which showing uh, kind of a folk culture and the local cultures, uh, which could be juxtaposed as the uh, banana tree. So we showing uh, the. Uh, uh, different kind of the painting uh, from different generation of the painter, including the painter from the uh, most initial uh, uh, generations, the youngest generation. But uh, somehow because uh, these tropical planets are surrounded uh, by our uh, daily landscape, so it uh, quite makes sense that the painter will uh, instinctively uh, use them as a uh, very important subject on their uh, painting. And besides the paintings, uh, we are also trying to introduce the perspective from the indigenous Taiwanese artists. For example, uh, Elaine Luruan's, uh, her works uh, is not directly uh, depict uh, a certain kind of the uh, planet, but somehow we feel uh, the uh, quality and uh, the shape of her work uh, is very fit. Uh, the the main topic we want to discuss is on this uh, exceptions and Itan Papavalum's work is another important example about uh, the indigenous uh, perspective on the uh, 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 plane landscape of the islands. And at the end of the exhibition, we also try to represent uh, how the uh, youngest artists, uh, they are working, their daily workings on the artistic uh, careers uh, reflect uh, the, uh, the uh, landscape of the island. So we show in uh, some studios uh, of the uh, young uh, artists directed in the museums and Although the painting is not directly uh, depict the shape of the planet, but somehow we can a uh, feeling about uh, even a surrealism uh, sketch has been uh, seriously influenced by the landscape itself. So uh, it's a very interesting uh, opportunity that uh, we promote uh, this uh, topic in the southern part of the Taiwan. So we decide uh, to also try to uh, make uh, some actions on promotion uh, campaigns. For example, uh, in the southern part of uh, Taiwan, so most of people they speak uh, the uh, local language. The Taiwanese is uh, pretty similar as uh, the language usage in uh, the Philippines. Uh, for example, in Visayas, people speak uh, Cebuanos. So uh, we go to uh, the uh, local uh, radio station and try to use uh, Taiwanese uh, language, which of course is very challenge, challenge for me as well. And we try to use the different language to promote uh, these exceptions uh, to the local uh, audience. And luckily, uh, the radio station just uh, uh, mentioned to us that uh, a banana farmer uh, he decided to uh, visit uh, this, ex this exception uh, first time. And uh, okay, my, my minute is almost end. Okay, so, so, uh, so, all right, so I can try to skip uh, my uh, presentations and just want to show in uh, the environment of the Taina Museums. Uh, it's also including a lot of uh, pantry pregnated uh, during the colonization period. And we also try to uh, uh, list things, uh, the history uh, which uh, use the four pregnant as the subject. Uh, I mean, uh, we try to use uh, the perspective from the pregnant uh, to uh, rewriting the 
the economical and industrial history of the island. So here is the end uh, of the presentation. Uh, I want to uh, represent a part of the poem because this poem also has been showing uh, at uh, the end of the exhibitions in the museum. It was a poem uh, written by a Taiwanese poet, Ji Quan. So this poem was talking about uh, uh, the beauty and the aesthetic of the butternut trees and how it uh, reflects uh, to uh, the uh, Pacific island of uh, Taiwan. And I translated uh, this poem uh, last night and, and joined my translation. I am just wondering uh, this poem could be also depict uh, uh, other uh, Pacific islands as well. It's not only uh, the stories about Taiwan, but the story about the tropical environment. Okay, so it's uh, the end of my presentation and I will stop here. Thanks for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Noble Wo. Uh, in the open uh, forum or the discussion later, perhaps we can expand on a few ideas that you mentioned. Uh, I would like to remind uh, everyone that they can post their questions and comments on Facebook and on uh, YouTube via the comment thread and the comments section. So I will introduce uh, our next speaker, Anushka Rajendran. I will first uh, introduce her practice as a curator and as a writer, after which I will also introduce Tayeba Begum Lipi's practice. Uh, Anushka will also present uh, on Lipi's uh, practice because they've worked together on an exhibition in the past. Anushka Rajendran is an independent curator and writer based in Delhi. Her ongoing curatorial research traces how the notion of the public has acquired alternative significance to contemporary art in recent years, as well as the aesthetics of engagement within exhibition frameworks. This, has inform this is informed by her previous research on responses by artists living in India in the 1990s to political and cultural trauma, which has since expanded to encompass the South Asia region. She is the curator of Pramea Art Foundation, Delhi, and was on the curatorial team for Kochi Muziris Biennale 2018 in India. Recent exhibitions include Phantasmapolis, Looking Back to the Future, uh, for the Asian Art Biennial 2021, in Taiwan, Language is Migrant, the Columboscope, uh, Columboscope 2022 in Sri Lanka, and yet the air was still steering at Fundacion Sandreto Rerebao Dengo in Madrid in 2021 in Spain, Speculations on a New World Order at the Shrine Empire, uh, Shrine Empire 2020 in New Delhi, and Between the Lines at the Aomori Contemporary Arts Center uh, in 2019 in Japan. She has published essays in several publications, including anthologies and monographs focusing on the South Asia region. Tayeba Begum Lipi was born in Gaibanda, Bangladesh. She did her MFA in 1993 at the Institute of Fine Art in, at the University of Dhaka. Tayeba is the co-founder and trustee of Brito Arts Trust in Bangladesh. She has done a number of uh, solo exhibitions uh, and projects in Istanbul, in London, in Dhaka, in New York City, Hong Kong, and Delhi. Her major duo with artist Mabubu Rahman uh, are artists as activists at the Eli and Edith Broad Art Museum uh, USA in 2016, curated by Caitlin Doherty and Faces of Intimate Strangers at the Modern Art Museum uh, in Shanghai, curated by Sandy Shu, Shu Chi Lo. She was one of the major artists for the Bangladesh Pavilion at the 54th Fedes Biennale in 2011, and No Country by Guggenheim, uh, New York City UBS map exhibition uh, between 2013 and 2014. Her sculptural works recreate everyday objects using unexpected materials such as safety pins and razor blades. 
This purposeful and provocative choice of material speaks to the violence facing women in Bangladesh, as well as referencing tools used in childbirth in the more underdeveloped parts of the country. I Wed Myself from 2020, 2010 is one of her more notable video works. Tayeba is included in the 50 Contemporary Women Artists, Groundbreaking Contemporary Art from 1960 to Now, edited by John Gosley and Heather Zeises and forward with a foreword by Elizabeth Sacker, uh, published by Schiffer in 2018. So Tayeba um, sends us her regards. As mentioned earlier, she is on fieldwork outside Dhaka, um, where internet is inaccessible. So let us welcome Adushka. Thank you so much, Tessa, for that introduction and also inviting me to be part of this forum. It's such a pleasure. Um, I will start by situating an aspect of my curatorial practice, um, which is which has been interested in engaging with uh, nationalist approaches within Indian art and critiquing it actively, even as it might provide uh, an effective secular and liberal counterpoint to the rise of right wing politics in my context. And how to engage with the local without falling within the traps presented by such frameworks in a way. Um, I mean, that is not to say that they haven't, this This is a subject that needs to be systematically looked at uh, from the internationalism of Mulkaraj Anand's Chienale India in 1968 to later attempts to extend beyond national and regional frameworks presented by the Cochin Israel's Biennale and uh, several other attempts as well, including museums that primarily only show Indian artists in India. I mean, there, there is so much to go into, which I don't think I'll be able to right now, so perhaps another time. And this is also not to say that there haven't been artist-led networks and even commercial platforms that have subversively supported exchanges to take place, especially in South Asia, where uh, borders are highly regulated, even as histories overlap and um, cannot be neatly segregated. And I will also touch upon this when I speak about Lippi's practice and her work through Brito to reach out to a larger global platforms of solidarity. Um, as the modern imagination of the nation state continues to fail us, as do their diplomatic configurations, as most recently highlighted by the relative global inability to resolve the crisis in Ukraine, what culture can support are not blatant internationalisms that retrace the routes determined by flows of goods and capital, but facilitate existing simultaneities between hyper-local contexts that have knowledge resources and strategies for survival to share with each other and learn from each other in an attempt to forge solidarities that transcend constructs of colonial, international, global, or transnational, with the, especially in the context of rapidly shifting circumstances compounded by the ongoing pandemic and also ecological crises and the rise of exclusionary nationalisms around the world to build conversations within Asia, across Asia, and also with the world, building an approach that is uh, intimately local, but not bound by national priorities. Um, in my practice, this attempt at forging solidarities is manifested by exploring methods of working with and sustaining exchanges between artists through frameworks that do not take for granted exhibition models and other formats, including programming that we have inherited from Western institutions. Here, it will be helpful to mention Hamad Nassar's essay, Reimagining the Museum, where he addresses something that he calls the epistemological jet lag as a phenomenon that occurs when uh, art that is shown in context that is steeped in discourse is shown in, an, in other contexts that is perhaps lacking in similar discourses. And um, to go into, I'll go through some of my projects. I was invited to be uh, the founding curator of Pramay Art Foundation, uh, which is an institution, a nonprofit institution based in Delhi. And uh, so when I started working with them, my proposal for the institution included working with artists in different contexts, including practitioners based in Delhi and emerging young artists and students as well, but um, without elaborate in infrastructures that allow for, for instance, extensive shipping or, but by facilitating local production and also necessitating a form of 
informal engagement with emerging artists in India um, beyond what expected programs like talks and things like that that are related to exhibitions towards pedagogic ends, especially when inviting international artists. I'll just share screen to show some images. Um, So this was an exhibition by uh, Sue Williamson, who is a South African artist and activist who has been um, very influential in her work against the apartheid. And um, she was invited with a very specific project called Other Voices, Other Cities to Delhi. And um, this is a project that originated in Havana many years ago when she was invited to the Biennale. And uh, she collected statements and testimonies from locals um, around her and tried to put up those statements in public spaces and the work was ultimately censored and that led her to kind of explore the possibility of propping up certain statements and testimonies collected from locals living in the various cities that she travels to temporarily propping, propping it up in public spaces and photographing it and then removing it so that the, the the statement itself can endure in the memory of a photograph even as it may not be able to exist locally especially perhaps in more regulated political contexts where public spaces aren't as free as perhaps they should be so in India, she was um, invited to work on a version of this, which uh, ended up in a statement where she collaborated with a lot of young artists uh, based in the city and collectively discussing their memory of the city, the experience of the city, the challenges that they face, and ultimately came up with a statement, which in a way has been quite special because it anticipated certain divisive tendencies that, that, that would kind of rupture quite rapidly um, since then in uh, Delhi. And she's done this in Hong Kong, Johannesburg, many parts of the world where especially young people are invited to engage and reflect on their city and share na narratives and testimonies that are compelling. And then um, we invited artist Paul Wong, who um, is a queer rights activist and pioneering media artist based in Vancouver of Chinese origin. And uh, working with Paul was especially special because he, at that point of time, had been delving into uh, his personal familial archives, letters shared between his mother and her family in China, and how that kind of such a personal, intimate archive could perhaps reveal um, the political context and how it affected people at the personal level. And he, in conjunction with the exhibition, led a workshop of young artists in Bangalore, where he invited them to delve into their own epistolary archives and through letters that their family members had received, thinking about global flows and movement and, and how that affects the personal and the familial spaces and how culture cannot be static and be fixed in that sense. Um, I recently uh, co-curated a language is migrant as part of the seventh edition of Columboscope, an interdisciplinary arts festival based in Sri Lanka. Um, the, so the title of the exhibition language is migrant draws from Cecilia Vicuna, a poet, a Chilean poet, activist and artist uh, writing, which holds that movement is primordial to life and circulation is integral to how the world around us has shaped and also thinking about linguistic flows. And and, um, and sounds that, that travel through bodies and embodied forms of language. And also thinking about artists as vital storytellers of our times and the kind of um, narratives and archives that they can present, especially when official mainstream accounts are non-inclusive. So I'd like to highlight two projects. This was done during the pandemic. And I'd like to highlight a few projects under this that kind of um, included engagement and similar to models that I, uh, models of exhibition that I had worked with at Premier Art Foundation, but taking it further in, in the light of the pandemic, especially when travel of international artists was not possible. 
So this is an ongoing project by Marinella Senatore, an Italian artist called the School of Narrative Dance, which is a nomadic platform that has already traveled to many parts of the world, where she collaborates with local choreographers and performers in engaging local communities and exploring what uh, performance and embodied forms of expression can articulate when and also pass in the inadequacy of linguistic forms of expression and the spoken word. So during the pandemic, uh, it wasn't possible for her and her choreographers to travel to Sri Lanka. So and, and even Sri Lanka was facing intermittent lockdowns, which made travel within the island also quite difficult. And uh, so she collaborated extensively with two movement therapists and performance artists, Ashley Fagnoli and Hasandi Niriela, based in um, Sri Lanka, where they um, engaged with communities that they had been working as independent practitioners uh, with in the island and uh, also others who were interested in being part of the School of uh, Narrative Dance uh, via Zoom sessions where even in isolation, they were able to kind of come together and uh, move together, explore performative methods together and creating solidarities and community and a sense of community, even when they were far apart from each other, from physical spaces with each other. And um, this uh, other project by Dora Garcia, Spanish artist, um, was the Hearing Voices Cafe, which is again a nomadic platform that has visited many, many parts of the world. But here in Sri Lanka, it was realized through active collaboration with Jayampati Guruke, a performance artist based in Sri Lanka, who had access to networks and communities and were able to together think of a series of programs that explore um, the, the sense of political communal um, uh, groups that can be formed around the setting of a cafe and the mutual support groups that can emerge around such circumstances. As a result of the pandemic, rather than hold it in a closed door cafe, we decided to um, host this project in a public park, uh, a tiny cafe in a public park where uh, anyone can kind of gather and the kind of interest that it elicited from um, regular park goers and how they gathered around it and participated in the conversations were quite compelling. Several artists, activists, poets, performers, writers came together, psychiatrists came together during uh, these sessions that extended throughout the 10 day duration of the festival and were in active conversation with each other exploring various narratives. So these are some of the forms of uh, collaboration and uh, intimate engagement with certain contexts that are possible when showing artworks um, in different parts of the world. And uh, this is another work by Pankrak Sulap, which was also part of Columbus Co. And uh, for this project, Pankrak Sulap, the way they work, they're from uh, Sabah um, in Borneo and, um, and from Malaysia, this artist collective that engages actively with the rural context, but at the same time, drawing inspiration from punk rock, which informs the title of the collective as well, punk rock, which is a local way of enunciating um, the music movement, but really being inspired by the DIY energies of this global movement and articulating it through the intimately local context for, for where Sulab actually refers to a resting place for farmers in their village. And um, so usually when they work internationally, they engage extensively with communities, local communities, speaking with them, spending time with them, drawing narratives from them, which would ultimately result in, the, in a communal unveiling of their woodcut prints where they ink the plate, spread cloth over it, and then invite the community to dance and sing and celebrate before they finally over it, before they finally unveil the print. Of course, such um, in, intense engagement was not possible and their travel again was not possible because of the pandemic, because of which they, in, they, they were in conversation with a local music group in Sri Lanka called The Soul for several months, exchanging ideas on shared Malay histories in Sri Lanka and the Malay archipelago, specifically in reference to movement of people during colonization from the Malay archipelago to Sri Lanka, and also certain simultaneities within ethnocentric nationalisms in Malaysia and in our relation to the, uh, the, the ethnic riots of 1969 and also the 1983 pogroms in Sri Lanka. So this was, uh, and in response to this woodcut print, which was made through these um, exchanges, also thinking about telepathy and intuition as a way of communicating, surpassing the inadequacies of Zoom 
as well. And uh, the soul also made a soundtrack in response to this woodcut print. Um, another project that I worked on with Tessa and Nabo, who are with us here today, was Phantasmopolis as part of the Asian Art Biennial, where I was in charge of the video art program, which also had an online location. And here, um, instead of, uh, it felt very important to us to, to make sure that instead of emulating certain structures of digital exhibition making that were initiated by the market structures through art fairs and other commercial entities, to actually think about and sustained by big tech infrastructure such as Facebook and Instagram to think about what an alternative open source digital archives other way uh, could could present forms of um, showing art and engaging with it extensively on the internet. So we invited uh, Cam and uh, who we invited Padma, which is an online archive for uh, video based moving image based material on the internet for several years now. And um, they were where uh, it, it is completely nonprofit, where uh, visitors to the platform can search, browse, uh, access archives, practitioners can freely upload their content to share with the larger community, and also kind of thinking about technologies that had been intentionally suppressed or kept away from the mainstream domain, working with such technologies. And um, extensive annotations that are possible and annotations by different people in conversation with each other on this platform. So using technologies from Padma, uh, a group that uh, believes that they in a way use technology indigenously, um, having imagined this way before YouTube was even popular in our part of the world, and uh, inviting them to conceptualize the online location where films were shown, where the films as part of the video art program were shown. And um, Fantasma Paul is also thinking about sci-fi uh, cultures and various futurisms in, um, in, in Asia. And uh, Padma holds that the archive is not just about the remnant, but is also about the reserve and the various futurisms that such reserves from the archive can open up for art practitioners and engagers uh, of culture. I will end my presentation here and uh, quickly start speaking about Taiba Begum Lippi, who unfortunately, as Tessa mentioned, could not um, be part of the session, could not join us physically today. I worked with, I've been in touch with Lippi, we've been friends for a very long time, and um, we were, it was such a pleasure to collaborate with her on the exhibition Vanity Fair, which is a solo exhibition in Delhi in 2019. And I'll speak a little bit about that exhibition and also talk about her practice. It is such a privilege to fill in for her, whose practice I just completely love and adore. Um, Alipi is a pioneering Bangladeshi artist, like whose, whose practice has really pushed boundaries and surpassed conventions of media and material, and also um, conventional understandings of what art can even be, not just in Bangladesh, but also in the larger South Asia context. Um, her, her, her strikingly feminist practice explores issues of marginality, structural bias, representation of the female body as an entry point to critique binary impositions of gender. Um, in society. And her now iconic use of the razor blades and safety pins, these gleaming polished surfaces, actually kind of uh, reveal how, how such gleaming um, surfaces can actually be capable of extreme violence. And um, in and creating, but, but the structures themselves are fragile. The first time she worked with the razor blade was during a residency in Pakistan, where she actually sourced uh, these razor blades from stores from it was there were store bought blades razor blades that she stitched together with her hand to create her sculptures now she fabricates them but um again it's about how what 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 is so important to me about her practice is that it it's it's at the same time a critique of capitalism and neoliberal market structures that have entered the arts and at the same time it talks about the violence that can remain beneath the gleaming surface of such um engagement with capital. Um, and uh, besides her own practice, Lippi has paved the way for experimental work in the region through her role as an institution builder in collaboration with Mahbubur Rahman, her partner, through Brito Art Trust, which they founded in 2002 as a way to bring together a lot of the work that they had already been doing for the artist community in Bangladesh, being the first 
alternative artist-run nonprofit network in Bangladesh that had a global reach and uh, worked towards actively connecting waves of art making in South Asia, um, facilitated by the Triangle Arts Network and other arts institutions in the region, including Kita International Artists Collective in Sri Lanka, Koj in Delhi, and Basel in um, Pakistan. And um, Brito over the years has remained courageously independent, supporting experimental projects in the local context and engaging with young emerging artists and giving them an open space to truly experiment with new ideas, be provocative and explore interdisciplinary collaborations and attempt to build exhibitions differently. Um, though based in Dhaka, their work with Brito actually takes them to many different um, locations in Bangladesh beyond the urban, which is where Lippi is right now, and um, to artists and collectives working from various contexts in Bangladesh and engaging with the challenges that they present for creative work. I will show you some images from Lippi's exhibition that I did together with her. So this was the, I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, so this was an exhibition that I did together with Lippi Vanity Fair, as I mentioned earlier, where we tried to turn the art gallery into a shop. Uh, like a high fashion shop and uh, the, the announcement the poster for the exhibition was also imagined as like a magazine ad in a way a fashion magazine ad i'll read an excerpt from my curatorial note for the exhibition just to kind of um give a sense of what we were trying to explore together Vanity Fair addressed the irony embedded in the commodification of art gesturing towards Taiba Begum Lippi's own works, especially those that represent movements that are staunchly critical of the economic circuits that they are likely to traverse. Known for her feminist art practice that has over the years called into question the brutal ways by which overarching patriarchal structures have confined women and subjected them to physical as well as psychological violence, as well as rigid structures of gender, the artist is also self-conscious of the way her own work, as well as the work of other explicitly political artists, are being subsumed and appropriated by the logic of capital in an art context that is undeniably yet to shake off deeply rooted sexism. While the presence of such work is subversive in itself, to be seen, recognized and heard, making emancipatory dents in the system, this exhibition goes a step forward in acknowledging the toxic masculinity that is easily able to appropriate and divert resistance movements to its own benefit. And art is not alone. The logic of technocratic late, late capitalism seeps into civilian movements as well. In the current context that we occupy, who is able to completely ameliorate cultural production to a position where it is completely untouched by the neoliberal patterns of production and consumption that unconsciously inform our thoughts, behavior, and aspirations? This exhibition was also um, imagined at a time when uh, the Me Too movement was, especially this exhibition was in Delhi, so it was particularly being talked about and discussed and um, several serial sexual harassers were called out even in the art world. And also at a time when there were protests in Bangladesh um, towards the release of an activist and a photographer, Shahid Al Alam. And, um, and thinking about how uh, this a certain kind of hashtag activism actively uh, has replaced a, any kind of true revolutionary spirit. How that form of protest falls so neatly within the um, the language of neoliberal capitalism and commodification and the, the, the traps of working in that way, protesting in that way or moving in that way was something that she was quite concerned about and thinking about how it becomes a brand and uh, protest becomes a brand and how it's used to, how, how such movements can be instrumented mm -hmm. towards, um, uh, towards one's own identity construction in, um, and as a signifier of one, one's own identity construction. Um, so here we, this was the shop front in a way where we kind of assembled some of our sculptures that again looked at um, shoes and bags and uh, boots that were made of razor blades. 
And she also made a series of T-shirts for this that as truly accessible art, which were priced quite affordably uh, with some of these, um, um, these kind of uh, sexist terms and violent um, phrases that circulate so easily on social media and also certain um, says well-meaning hashtags that had been used in um, defense of people who really needed support as well. And, um, and these t-shirts were also accompanied by a performance video of her wearing this and walking down what was kind of like a ramp and um, thinking about how it plays a role in how we construct, how social media itself plays a role in our identity construction these days. There were also drawings that she made that kind of were also inspired by ads and posters that are often very common in these spaces. And what was really inspiring about uh, Lippi's willingness to work with this exhibition was also how she's consistently remained radical, critical, even of certain circuits that have supported and sustained her own practice. And thinking about certain um, how the, the lack of general access, which uh, is not a targeted fault, but more of a systemic uh, problem within the art system sometimes in uh, India where they remain, where spaces of showing work do remain inaccessible to a very large segment of the population. So I will uh, leave you with, I think I've almost run out of time, but I really want to show you an excerpt from a video that a video essay and interview that was commissioned uh, as part of uh, this exhibition where she talks about her work. And um, so we can also hear from her and, and, the, and her role in finding Brito, founding Brito, and um, yeah, just uh, um, intimately, uh, uh, you know, uh, landscape, uh, not landscape watercolor or painting, jeta amra to kalhure mane dekheshi ba student hai to koreshi, sheta amra kore bona. Amra hoy to unno material de ki bhabe uita ke mane ekta installation, ekta lander. Develop put the Padisha dictani in the Kora. Talk some of the case hidden director Bulbum Usman Chilan. Only about Buddha to put the Halors then, only could be all Koshuma Chilan, director, Kint Uni Uishuma, one it took a boy in his children by the ticket. J. Boygulama the Shanghati Kupoka. I couldn't be sure when I'm eighty six years old, what do you do? Don't come in the classic motor. Ah, when Hotoba quite much Kuno Bondu Yellow. I'm a book on the Nishat Nakashan. Now they want chat the books. Actually, I'm the Ekanobui, be a fetishish Korakota. I'm the Shishkola Piano. Young Amade Regent Berulo Agarumash. So eleven month to be Kikul. What can you do? Eighty Agarumash Gap. And then to my master's first and then a master first party, eighteen to batch wait good. Tamra the one Purikadi Shurukolamje, Kikoramra Kitu workshop, put the body, Kikoramra to the logo to have a catch put the body. Tamra Tokon the head, Brooklyn Mukutsi, Bong actor, could be interesting, Bishoy, Chetology at a traveling exhibition. Jetamra by road, Chenepal Jawa, Bhutan Jawa. Kolkata ki exhibition kora then Bangladesh ki exhibition. Kya shuru toh madar kaj na on madar. Amra paat jo nchi na. Bito bara bara ek change ho jaye toh ta. Ninety five ya amra bara ek ta. Shudu Nepal le jawar ko thabhi. Toh kono kintu amra class hotcha na. Hmm. Class hotcha na shita faake. Amon kichu korcho jeta class shesh kora pore ja apeka korcho na juna ta chaite beshi. Ha. Kan toh toh tumar studio ne. Hostel le tumi ki kaj korbe. To sija na kanchi pura gallery tam da visho da kori ninety four e. ওখানে আমরা একটা খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং জায়গা দেখি যে কি করে কালেকটিভলি আর্টিস্টরা একটা গ্যালারি কেও একটা অর্গানাইজেশনাল ফরম্যাটে দেখতে চায় আচ্ছা তাদের হাই মানে ইভেন সাউথ এশিয়া মধ্যে আমি বলবো যে এটা প্রথম আমাদের একটা মানে খুব সারপ্রাইজিংলি আমরা ওটা অবজার্ভ করি যে ওদের ওই গ্যালারির সাথে স্টুডিও স্পেস আছে এবং প্রিন্ট স্টুডিও আছে এবং আর্টিস্টরা ওখানে কাজ করছে আবার পাশাপাশি এক্সিবিশন করছে এবং গ্যালারিটা চালাচ্ছে আর্টিস্ট আর্টিস্টরা ওকে আমরা ওটা এক মাসের ট্রাভেল করি নেপালের নানান জায়গায় ওরা প্রথমে বুঝতেই পারছিল না আমরা কি বলছি 
কি করতে চাইছি অলরেডি তখন মাহবুবার আমার একটা ডিউক আছে যে চারকোলা টিচার ও সহ একজন ফটোগ্রাফার একজন ভিডিওগ্রাফার নিয়ে আমরা লামাতে একটা ল্যান্ডার নিয়ে 15 দিনের একটা কাজ করে চলে এসেছিলাম সো আমাদের অলরেডি একটা এক্সপেরিয়েন্স হয়েছে সো আমরা খুব এক্সাইটেড ছিলাম যে ওখানে গিয়ে আমরা যখন কোনো ম্যাটেরিয়াল নিয়ে যাইনি বলেছি যে ওখানকার যে লোকাল ম্যাটেরিয়াল ওটা কালেক্ট করে কাজ করব ওই এক্সপেরিয়েন্সটাকে আমরা কন্টিনিউ করার জন্য তখন আমরা নেপালে তো নেপালে তো ল্যান্ডস্কেপ আরো ইন্টারেস্টিং তো কেন না আমরা সেই পোখরার একটা পাহাড়ে গিয়ে কাজ করি অথবা সুন্দরী জালে ওয়াটার বডি আছে ওখানে ওদের ওখান নিয়ে কাজ করি বিশাল বিশাল পাহাড়ের মাঝখানে পানির ইলেকট্রিসিটি যেখানে উৎপাদন করে আর কাঠমান্ডুতে কিছু কাজ করি এই ল্যান্ডার্ডের ইন্ট্রোডাকশন তখন নেপালে একটা নতুন অর্থাৎ বাংলাদেশি এই ট্রাভেলিং গ্রুপ যেটা থিওরিটিক্যালি নেপালে গেছে কারণ বাংলাদেশে কিছু কনটেক্সটের লিমিটেশনের কারণে হয়তো নেপালে গিয়েছো ফর एग्जांपल ল্যান্ডস্কেপের লিমিটেশন কিন্তু তুমি যে কাজটা করছো সেটা নেপালিজ আর্ট সিনের জন্য কি নতুন কমপ্লিটলি নিউ এবং তারা তারা কি এখন বোঝে ও সেগুলো সবাই বলে বোঝে বাংলাদেশ থেকে এসেছে তারা পড়ায় এটা আচ্ছা তাদের এটা মানে এই মোমেন্টটা পড়ায় হ্যাঁ এই সময়টা যে আমরা যে ছিলাম এটা তারা পড়ায় পুরোটা হ্যাঁ তারপর আমরা চারু কলা এটা শো করি সেই শোটা আমার মনে হয় যে এক ধরনের বলবো যে চিন্তার খোরাক দেয় লোকজনদের অনেকে অনেক ধরনের কোশ্চেন করে সে সময় যে শোটা চারুকলা ওই গ্যালারির জন্য খুব আনহিউজুয়াল একটা শো ছিল অনেকে ভাবছিল যে এটা কি ফটোগ্রাফারের শো মানে মহিদুলের শো নাকি আমি এবার যেতে চাই বৃত্ত যেটা তুমি আর মাহবুব কো ফাউন্ড করেছো এখন অনেকে ইনভলভ এতদিনে এমন একটা জায়গায় পৌঁছে যে বৃত্ত চলতে পারে তোমরা না গেলেও তোমরা যখন বাইরে থাকো বা এখানে থাকো ঢাকায় না থাকো চলছে তারপরে জুটি হিসাবে কাজ আলাদা করছো একসাথে করছো ডায়ালগ করছো তারপরে আস্তে আস্তে পাঁচজন তারপরে একেবারে ফর্মালাইজ এস বৃত্ত এবং ফর্মালাইজ হওয়ার কারণে কিছু সুযোগ হয় অবশ্যই আবার কিছু কাগজে কলমে না মানে মেন্টালি আর কি যে একটা বড় গ্রুপ একটু লার্জার গ্রুপ করে একটা স্পেস আমরা নিতে পারি কিনা যেহেতু গ্যালারির খুব অভাব ছিল আমরা আর আমাদের শো তো কেউ করতে চাইতো না বিকজ মানে আমাদের কাজগুলো ডিফারেন্ট বলে কেউই সাহস পেত না এটা আমরা দু হাজার সালে ফিরে এসে মানে জোট বাচ্ছিলাম আর কি এটা আমরা বাইরে থেকে আসার পর পরই যখন আমরা অলরেডি ভাবছি একটা জায়গা করার জন্য তখন পূজা এসে ওই প্রাতিষ্ঠানিক ব্যাপারটা আমাদের মগজে ঢুকানোর চেষ্টা করে কিন্তু ওটা আমরা বুঝতে পারি না আসলে আমরা খুব ভয় পেয়ে যাই যে কেন কাগজে কলমে হতে হবে তো দু হাজার এক সালে ও ও কয়েকবার ট্রিপ করে তো দু হাজার একেও আমাকে ইনভাইট করে ওদের খোঁজের ইন্টারন্যাশনাল ওয়ার্কশপে যাওয়ার জন্য মাহবুব যায় শিশিদা যায় আবুল মনসুর স্যার যান ওই সময় ওরা ওরা যায় একটা সেমিনারের জন্য তো ওই সময় বলা যায় যে রবার্ট লর্ডারের সঙ্গে পরিচয় তারপর আরো বেশি করে আমাদেরকে বুঝানো এবং রবার্টের সঙ্গে কথা বলার পর আমরা ওই কনফিডেন্সটা পাই যে হ্যাঁ মানে আমরা একটা ফর্মাল একটা অর্গানাইজেশনের দিকে যেতে পারি তো এখান থেকে আসলে বৃত্তের বলা যায় যে উৎপত্তি বৃত্ত হওয়াতে একটা হয়ে যায় যে আমাদের ইন্টারন্যাশনাল নেটওয়ার্কটা অনেক বেড়ে যায় কানেকশনটা তৈরি হয় বা আমাদের একটা বাইরের থেকে একটা ধরো ইন্টারন্যাশনালি একটা এই অর্গানাইজেশনাল যে পপুলারিটি ওই জায়গাটা হয়তো বা ক্রিয়েট করি আমরা কোনো ভাবে তারা লোকজন পছন্দ করা বাট সেটার সাথে আবার আমাদের ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল প্র্যাকটিসটা আমরা খুব একটা ম্যাচ করি নাই আসলে ওইটা একদম আলাদা ছিল বৃত্ত কিন্তু আলাদা ছিল
I will stop showing this video here, but I hope that this uh, has been, it was also really lovely to hear from Libby in conversation with Naeem. And also it brings together some of the earlier discussions we had um, with reference to my practice around a certain kind of internationalism and the necessity of exchanges globally and also within the region in South Asia. And Lippi has really truly been a pioneer to her work with Brito um, in, in such regard, which it was great to hear directly from her. Thank you once again. I'm sorry, I'm slightly I've, um, overstepped my time limit. Thank you, Adushka. Uh, the video was quite instructive. Um, it was good to listen to Lippi discussing how Brito Arts Trust started and how she, uh, how her, how her artistic practice is coincides with uh, the trust. Uh, this is just a quick reminder for our audience on Zoom, on Facebook and YouTube. If you have questions for our speakers, uh, share them with us by way of the comment thread and the comments section. Um, so what struck me from the uh, three presentations was how Three, three ideas was how the notion of the local can be troubled through the curatorial. So if we recall, both Nobuo and Anushka uh, spoke about exhibitions that um, dealt with localities through shared colonial histories, uh, through connections within uh, Taiwan itself, um, I liked what Anushka said about uh, the different intimacies that the local can generate, but that these intimacies can also resist nationalist agendas um, and can resist co-optation. No? Um, I was also struck by how the components of these exhibitions, uh, Nobu Was Everyday Life and Landscape of the Island, and the work that Anushka did for the Pramea Art Foundation, a language as migrant for the Columbus Scope, and uh, the recent uh, Asian Art Biennial, uh, all these uh, explored how the exhibitionary can go beyond the physical exhibition itself. Uh, and uh, they mentioned certain curatorial approaches that we can probably uh, consider as uh, models. I think when uh, the pandemic struck and we were in the midst of working on exhibitions, I think we really had to shift our attention away from the centrality of the physical component of the exhibition itself and think of uh, how this can be presented in ways that can still engage and reach out to more publics uh, like before. Um, lastly, I took note of what uh, Anushka mentioned as, um, I would probably call them strategies, no? uh, the, the nomadic, uh, the DIY, the performative, uh, how these strategies can go into the crafting of intimacies that can eventually lead to uh, solidarities that are global in scope. Um, perhaps in our discussion later, we can think on how these uh, approaches or, or models are um, answered to our specific contexts of practice. When Anushka and I met yesterday prior to the event, we were talking about how the market, for example, is such a strong force in uh, uh, the art world, both in Manila and uh, in Delhi. Um, and how do, we, how do we work with and work around that uh, reality? Um, in, for, in Nobuwa's case, I am always struck by how strong the infrastructure for the arts is in Taiwan. And I wonder what the challenges are for, uh, for a curator. I wonder how, what the challenges would be for a curator in such a context. You have this very strong 
infrastructure for uh, projects. But I wonder uh, how you navigate this, you know, this many institutional <laughs> networks and if there is indeed room for what Anushka would call the DIY. Um, uh, maybe we can uh, we can later expand this in the conversation that follows. So yes, would you like to add to this, uh, Anushka and Nobuo, and perhaps reference uh, uh, Lipi's practice? And one last thing. I was also struck by how Anushka described Lipi's practice as that which also uh, persists in criticality. You know, it's it's a criticality that is persistent and is quite strong. And the question she posed of um, activism and protest as being instrumentalized and how do we uh, uh, being instrumentalized for identity construction. Uh, maybe we can expand on those things. Uh, maybe we can have Nobuo answer my question on the challenges of working in a context where infrastructure is quite strong. And what challenges do you face? Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Tessa's questions. I think, uh, of course, the infrastructure, uh, as what you mentioned, is strong, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the upside of the strong is controversial. Yeah, I mean, including the organizer in the institution itself, because we are just starting a very serious uh, institutionalized uh, period, uh, which are very similar to the uh, Japan in 1980s, because every local city, they want to uh, organize and build in their own uh, city art museums. For example, I think one of the most challenging to curating in Tainan is that uh, uh, during last decade, Tainan was uh, initially has a very strong and vivid, uh, uh, you can say, kind of a DIY dynamic alternative space in the uh, golden age of the uh, Tainan's uh, uh, independent space uh, period. Uh, I think it's almost around a uh, fight to cement uh, independence happens at the same time, running by the uh, very young curators or the uh, or, or by a very dynamic uh, artist, artistic corrective. But everything uh, starting to become, uh, uh, you can say, it, uh, becomes more boring uh, since uh, the uh, open of the Tainan Art Museum. Yeah, so, so somehow uh, I can feel this kind of a struggling between uh, the scene of the uh, uh, alternative space and all sorts of art museums and and I think if you live in Tainan, the uh, art the, the art things of Tainan they have a kind of uh, untrusted uh, to the museum. So so what I want to do is that I want to uh, bridge in uh, kind of uh, two circles. Yeah. For uh, and I also want to uh, convince it that uh, the, the art museums, they can have kind of a more progressive uh, programs that has kind of openness for the uh, audience and also for the uh, existing uh, contemporary art, art, art circles, uh, which already been in Tainan for a while. Uh, so, so I think the strategy uh, speaking, uh, the, the topic uh, I choose is also kind of a very strategy uh, main thoughts that I can convince it's the uh, art museum because this, they, they might be imagined uh, this exception will focus on the painting about you know the tropical uh, romantic landscape which our pioneer painter already uh, uh, drawings uh, for a century yeah so so uh, I try to use this kind of opportunity to open a uh, kind of a dialogue and uh, one of the uh, most uh, successful achievement of this exhibition is that uh, uh, the radio stations, uh, they told me one banana farmer who visits the art museum first time in his life because he listens to our Taiwanese uh, radio broadcast to introduce this exhibition. And he is wondering about how the artists uh, depict the bananas in the art museum. So, 
So that's the first time he buy the ticket and enter the museum and he find out all the items we choose are highly related to his daily life and he's very satisfied and happy about uh, this show. So I think that's uh, that's uh, some things uh, we want to improve, but it's also uh, including a lot of challenges you said. Uh, Nobuo, for those who do not know where Tainan is, maybe you can mention where it is. And uh, uh, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think Tainan is a little bit like uh, Cebu. If we compare to the Philippines, it's an uh, ancient city uh, built uh, by the Dutch uh, since 17th centuries, and it's always kind of a cultural capital of Taiwan, but uh, far away from the economic uh, capital of the Taipei. So the uh, tropical, uh, it's it's also inside the tropical climate zone. So so geographically and culturally, it's uh, very different uh, compared to the uh, center of Taiwan. And and uh, as I said, uh, the uh, alternative uh, scene was very strong because uh, the Tainan was kind of a city that offered a uh, lower price of the rental and the people also have kind of a strong tradition on the uh, craftsmanship and and they also have a very strong uh, aesthetic about uh, not only about food but also about the culture and the 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 uh the regional uh folk culture itself yeah but uh i think things starting to change because the gentrifications and the uh, government also starting to uh, developing the south uh because uh during the history of taiwan uh uh since the japanese colonizations the government uh, all needs a uh, focus on the developing of the taipei but uh, this uh, kind of uh, ideas uh, after democratized uh, since 1990s that the uh, countries uh, need to be uh, uh, balancing. But the balancing means the introducing of the industries and also uh, because the in introducing of the, the very important uh, branded uh, industries like semiconductor uh, production. So, which also rising the uh, price of the rental housing, and it's also changed uh, a lot of the cultural landscape of the city. Yeah, so we see this happening in many cities in Asia. I wonder whether the newly built museum is part of a, of a national agenda on culture, like uh, many national governments, the state, they often deploy culture you not know, to for for uh development i wonder if the new museum in tainan is part of a uh, of a national agenda um, I, I think it's not kind of a national but it's kind of uh since the 1990s the central government starting to release the power and also the budget to the uh, local city so the local cities they all want to become in taipei <laughs> can say that so so if Taipei have the art museum why not we should also build one if we have enough budget and it's also kind of a very strong attractive uh, hub for the uh, tourism so so it's kind of uh, ideas that uh, the each local city they want to have their own uh, professional in institution I can un understand their their agenda but on the other hand, uh, uh, this kind of uh, institution will usually highly related to the uh, local uh, uh, political uh, background. Yeah. So, so of course, uh, this kind of a museum will usually charge by a, a more senior or more pioneer artist group or the uh, paintings associations or all the uh, professors from uh, the universities instead of uh, uh, dynamic uh, younger generations artists corrected yeah so so it's also uh shifting uh, the uh, landscape of the uh, contemporary art scenes now in on the island yeah thank you Nobuo. those are very interesting insights Anushka, you mentioned earlier that for the Pramaya Art Foundation projects, you had what you described as uh, informal engagements. Uh, 
uh, with a focus on pedagogy. Um, you also mentioned this very interesting project, uh, uh, Hearing Voices Cafe. Uh, in, in, in such projects, I wonder how your role as a curator would shift because we know that uh, working with artists who, who partner with uh, non-art communities, sometimes really uh, curators, they often in, in specific junctures of the project, we also have to take a back seat you know, especially when artists have had long-standing relations with communities. Sometimes we, you know, we, we have to disappear in the background. I, I wonder whether you can expand on, on such um, projects done in, in those contexts and uh, probably mention to us how your role as a curator would, you know, shift and change. Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Um, in my practice, I really believe that curation is an act of care, whether it is for the material integrity of an artwork in more conventional museum contexts or when we're dealing with material art or generally about like the politics of care as it manifests in relations between artists. Collaborations can also be sensitive at times. So then as a curator, you often end up being an interlocutor as well, facilitating that um, sense of care in engagements. For instance, uh, uh, in, re in response to your question about the work at Pramayat Foundation, um, what really uh, was striking about the first project that we did similarly with Sue Williamson was that that it wasn't really a, a dynamic where a very senior artist, uh, international artist visited Delhi and that she was kind of speaking to a group of young artists in a way that there is this kind of a classroom dynamic as one often sees, right? It wasn't like that. She was actually listening to what the, the really young artists based in Delhi had to say about their city and learning from them. And uh, in a way, I feel that sometimes um, when we work in contexts such as Asia and India, artists outside of our region very often want to show here. But then there is also something to be said about the emotional labor that is required while engaging with contexts, especially in South Asia, where infrastructures are precarious and um, it, it is, it, you know, we need to work with artists who are understanding of it and often very accommodative of it. And uh, so that was what really manifested. And uh, a project that I didn't talk about was with uh, Braha Ettinger, which was a series of closed door Zoom conversations during the pandemic, where we shared a bibliography with uh, of her writing as a psychoanalyst and a theorist with a young group of psychoanalysts, artists, curators, and art historians who kind of familiarize themselves with their work in advance. So that when we gathered together, it was really like an intimate kind of an interaction where they really spoke from their practice and their experience about the various ideas that already exist in her work. So some of this uh, is also about, uh, and if it wasn't for the curatorial role there, it would have perhaps very habitually fallen into a space where um, such classroom dynamics are reproduced and reinforced in a way. And also with the Hearing Voices Cafe, like you said, absolutely true. To an extent, we took a back seat. Um, Natasha Janwala and I worked on it and we took a, we took a back seat and allowed the con conversations to flow as much as we were also, especially the Colombo Scope team, because I was based in Delhi most of the year. So the Colombo Scope team was very generous and Natasha were generous with their own researchers uh, and uh, networks in the region and artistic communities that could also engage with the Hearing Voices Cafe. So in that sense, I feel that it was a collaboration between uh, Dara Garcia, Columbus Cope, and Jayampati Kuruke, in a way, in terms of bringing these conversations together at a public park. Thank you, Adushka. Um, it is, I think it's quite important that you pointed out the interloc interlocutor role of the curator, uh, because often we we are not aware that we are reproducing the same dynamics that we set out to unravel. No? Uh, but I think that's where the curator comes in. No? As you said, in such context, how, how do we not reproduce the class, classroom dynamic that uh, is, you know, often, that often happens. No? Um, 
Okay, maybe at this point, I'll read two questions posted on YouTube. Uh, I think both of you can answer. Um, uh, I'll read verbatim. Uh, do you think you could please help me with a particular example of a practice that would take capitalist circuits for granted or that become or that would fit neatly into those circuits in contrast to practices that build solidarity, as you said, and facilitate bringing out the local in a genuine way to engage internationally or engage beyond the nation. So are there particular practices that um, are outside of the capitalist circuit or those that do not fit neatly into those circuits? And practices that build solidarity to help bring out the local in a genuine way. I think genuine is also quite problematic, right? <laughs> uh, to engage internationally. Okay. Um, I think the question is also in the chat box so we can like unpack it too. The other question is how can artists use and honor local materials local narratives, sentiments, ideas, etc., without becoming a form of appropriation or speaking in behalf of another. So I think those two are related uh, questions, okay? Maybe you can take turns answering them. Um, Does the first question make sense, Anushka? Um, to an extent, yes, but okay. what is... I mean, I also have issues with these assumptions of purity in especially when it comes to cultural work or anything as well. It's about essentializing certain ideas. Whereas, for instance, in Lippi's work, it's not that she says she will not work with galleries or museums. She does engage with them. And like we were speaking about yesterday as well, very often as cultural workers, we are in a position where we have to straddle multiple worlds and while remaining true to our politics. So it's always a careful negotiation, I feel, in a way. But in terms of um, an example of an artist collective uh, that engages that whose practice is primarily about building solidarity I would say Pankrock Sulab it would be an example whereas they also work with a gallery and uh, they show at biennials and museums in many parts of the world but at the same time the fact that they remain committed to the rural context where their practice emerged and have been working as activists in that region while and even when they work with international contexts it's never uh, it, they, they kind of when I worked with them for the Kochi Biennale. They stayed in Kochi for more than a month, just walking around the city, meeting people, engaging with them. And finally, when their artwork was unveiled, most of them showed up at the biennial just to kind of see how they're, and they formed a statement at the end, which was unveiled in Kochi. So that way of working, which is, which is here, I would say, generally about human relations and this kind of network of social relations that kind of manifests in the final work that we can see. Um, yeah, so that would be my answer, but I'm also curious to hear what Napua has to say. Uh, right, I, I will try to uh, answer these two questions uh, together. Uh, I think the first question will be a little bit uh, more difficult because I think if uh, the artist uh, would like to state a uh, uh, highly capitalized uh, city, uh, it's of course will uh, hire uh, the uh, uh, higher the price of uh, surviving and uh, the artists uh, finally will try to find out kind of a way to, uh, to negotiate or deal uh, with the institutions or the galleries. But you can say unfortunately or luckily uh, uh, a lot uh, we have a very good infrastructure uh, on the institutions but we are weak uh, in the market because uh, the Taiwanese uh, arts are not uh, even uh, easy to find the local buyers here. So uh, the problem is that uh, because uh, somehow we are far away from the, uh, the uh, market, so, so the market somehow is uh, not uh, so engaged into the creation of the young artists here. And another uh, atmosphere is that uh, during last decades, in fact, a lot of uh, artists correctly and alternative space, they are starting to uh, trying to uh, learning uh, from uh, the experience of the Southeast Asia. In South Asia, they starting to co-work with 
the uh, artist group in Indonesia and even starting to engage into uh, like like a uh, Kathmandu uh, Triennial. So a lot of uh, methodology starting to introduce uh, to the island of Taiwan and it's became kind of uh, mainstream, especially for the uh, young generations uh, who want to organize the collective or the space. I think it's one of the very good uh, examples. And for the second questions about uh, how the artists use the uh, owner local materials, um, I, and without becoming a form of appropriations, um, I think uh, one of the uh, most important crucial part is that is the artists uh, or the curators, uh, they are really engaging into the uh, local context itself. And uh, I think, uh, for example, um, the, of course, uh, as I mentioned, the problem of the uh, Tainan Art Museum is the museum itself is the result of a gentrification. But somehow I think it's also kind of a chance that we can use the institutions uh, and use the results to uh, to uh, combine with the creations and the potentials from the young artists, which has a very rich experience to engage for it into the local context. And the institution itself also uh, provide kind of, uh, 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 you can say kind of a larger space or larger uh, possibilities to uh, make uh, or to encourage it, uh, the artists to make uh, the work becomes uh, more complicated or more dialogue. Yeah, so, so I don't think there's a kind of a real need uh, upside between the market or institutions or the artists, but it's highly relies on the uh, kind of, you can say technique of the curation or the notions uh, from the artist and curator itself that uh, to make uh, the project deal uh, uh, on the weight of uh, a self notion and, and that's, also uh, has the possibilities uh, to create a real uh, dialogue. Uh, thank you, Nobuo. Anushka, what you said earlier brought to mind this uh, phrase that you used to describe Leapy's practice, how to persist, how, how, how to allow this uh, criticality to persist. No? And I think as curators, we are engaging on an art ecosystem of multiple uh, platforms. So it, it remains a challenge, like how do we find support systems for artists to, to make their work? And often, uh, these might be intersections between those platforms, like how do we encourage uh, platforms from the market to support residencies, for example, or to support commissions, for example, or to uh, to support institutional exhibitions without us really compromising what you said is, uh, you know, how, how do we stay true to our, to our uh, politics? So, Anushka, do you have an answer to the second question? Like how do artists use and honor local narratives, local materials without appropriating them or assuming to speak on behalf of another? I think that's I think that ties very neatly into your question about residencies as well because uh, because the residency formats are something that I have been thinking about quite um, a bit recently also while thinking about these engaged forms of art making and sustaining conversations that's why conversation I feel is has been so important to my practice so it's not about an artist engaging with the context in a way that they show up for a month, they do research and they make work based on the history and what they've learned from the context, but rather thinking about when we have an international artist or an artist from another region, even within the same country, visiting another context, living and working there, thinking about what can we learn from each other when we think together or when we make things together. And uh, so thinking about ways of, um, uh, ways of collaborating that, I mean, the word collaborating can has also been used in the art world in a way that it's also become tokenistic in a way. So that's why I really like to emphasize on conversations 
and uh, how and crediting everyone, which often does not happen as much as it should. Be. <laughs> yeah. So I think there are these ways that they're, they're the curatorial role, I feel, is especially kind of uh, significant in terms of the invitations that are made out. Like, for instance, uh, Paul Wong's exhibition, somehow not that it made that much of an impact in the art world, which is relatively liberal com compared to the rest of the uh, other institutions in the country. But um, Paul Wong's exhibition was just weeks after Section 377 was repealed in India, which was an ancient law that criminalized homosexuality, you know, and is a queer rights activist. Coming to coming here and talking about these uh, kind of very intimate experiences and in his own practice and his own life as, uh, as, as a migrant growing up in Canada, you know, to present that, to be able to present that narrative at a time when it had a special relevance to the context here, that there could be a genuine dialogue between the exhibition and the politics and the history of the local context in that sense. Thank you, Anushka. I think conversations are, you know, crucial. And um, I think the ideal kind would be those that would unfold over time, meaning it doesn't end with a project. It doesn't happen with just only the artist. You know, it's, it's a conversation that expands and includes as many people uh, partners no uh, as it unfolds okay. yeah and just to also respond to your question about lippy's practice i know she's not here and <laughs> i don't want to you know claim or appropriate her practice at all but from having worked with her what i've realized is that she is consistently critical in her practice as an activist, because her work is also about, like for instance, her use of razor blades actually comes from her own experience and her family of using the razor blade to cut the umbilical cord. And as a child helping, you know, um, uh, her siblings of the midwife, like you know, uh, deliver her siblings. And and that that kind of sharp memory of, of you know, structural repression. So a lot of her work is also about, and that ties into your earlier comment about how um, this kind of neoliberal identity construction and how a certain kind of uh, activism of races or um, can be instrumented towards that. Because if these gleaming facades, it's about the society of the spectacle, right? What Debord said, these gleaming facades often betray the kind of violence that they embody. And, uh, and it's just a matter of looking at closely. So I think hers is a practice of unveiling these kind of structural forms of repression, even when her works are, can, when, when the visuality of something itself can be quite seductive. This is striking how Lipi described uh, working in the 1990s and traveling to Nepal with a group of artists also, and how that really shaped her hers and Mabu's uh, vision for Brito, no? Yeah, and such exchanges. She also mentions Puja Sood visiting Bangladesh. These exchanges very subversively manifested a regional solidarity when um, perhaps otherwise, especially with state-led institutions, that would be an impossibility in South yeah. Asia because of the political context. So, and in and, and Lippi's tra travel to Nepal, like she said, it's now entered mainstream art books in Nepal. But these exchanges and workshops and residencies that this network of institutions, artist run, artist led institutions in South Asia realized change contemporary art in the region forever in a way. Um, it's good that you mentioned residencies because uh, in the Philippines during the pandemic, there were a lot of uh, residencies that were launched and most of them were initiated by artists themselves and uh, hosted by spaces which they also uh, uh, set up or organized. Nobuo, any thoughts from your end? Uh, I, I just one thing to want to address uh, to reprise uh, the uh, lipids are really traveling to Nepal because uh, for me, I traveled to Dhaka in 2013. That's the first time I meet, I met a uh, and Mabuts in Dhaka. And for me, it's a little bit like, uh, I, I will not use the term, but a little bit like enlightenment of my personal curatorial career because that's uh, very exciting for me. So at that time, I saw that I uh, have a one, uh, I think one mile square meters 
uh, of the old dark cards, they, they just fit it uh, to expression and curation things on the Austria of the old dark cards. So that's a very inspiring means and a very strong uh, curatorial shock for me that the curators could be used that kind of methodologies to work with the community and the contents of the history. And uh, another thing I want to reply because uh, this forum talking about uh, the COVID-19 and so one thing that affected uh, Taiwan is that uh, uh, because the COVID-19 isolated the, uh, our uh, international uh, traveling and, and interactions, but it's also caused another opportunity. For example, so there's more opportunity for the local artists and curators like me. And the so people also stopping and starting to uh, working on kind of a long-term research and project. Uh, instead of uh, kind of uh, international traveling towards. So so that's, uh, uh, I can't say it's, that's the benefit from the pandemic because the pandemic so is a kind of a tragedy, but uh, it's indeed uh, reshaping uh, the curatorial uh, process here. Yeah, I agree, Nobuo. So I think, um, well, at least for me, the commitment to working on long-term uh, projects uh, was strengthened by the pandemic to maybe slow down the time of, <laughs> of the art world, especially the one that is imposed on us by the, by the market. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a minute left. Uh, any final notes from you both, Anushka and Nobuo? Uh, any ongoing exhibitions or future exhibitions we can look forward to? I think it's uh, important to highlight the three of us work together in realizing <laughs> a very large project during the pandemic yeah. and, uh, without travel or and then this question about appropriation I feel is especially relevant to the way we work right and, right, and, right. and so the, the forms of support that Nobu offered to us in the absence of sending us reading material and research and you know so I think that is worth talking about and also how I was, at least for my part of it, I was very conscious that, as I know was for you as well, Jessa, uh, that my vantage point was Delhi, where I was working from and conceptualizing the project from and thinking about it as a dialogue with the Taiwanese context rather than, you know, pretend to know everything about Taiwan, a country I've never actually visited and, you know, because of all these circumstances and thinking about it as a dialogue rather than making an exhibition for an audience and pretending to know what the politics of that viewership is. Yeah, thank you, Anushka. I think the Asian art biennial was the highlight of my uh, of the pandemic years for me. Uh, Nobuo? Uh, yeah, I just want to mention the reader is still on the right, process of right. preparation and we are trying to uh, towards uh, the archive and video to Manila. Yeah, so <laughs> so something still happens. Yeah. So uh, the Asian Art Biennial will have uh, uh, several afterlives. <laughs> okay. So on that note, I, I end our forum, our discussion forum, but I think we have uh, a few tasks left, right? Do we? Yes, ma'am. So we are to present uh, our certificates for of appreciation to our speakers. Okay, uh, LK, can you share the screen? Okay, first off, the College of Arts and Letters and the Department of Art Studies with the partnership of the Office for, of Initiatives for Culture and the Arts would like to present and award this certificate of appreciation to our speakers, Nobuo Takamori. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, for presenting here in this round table discussion shifts in territorial practice, curating during times of transition and change in the Cal Bahaginan Research Forum, given on the 15th of March, 2022, at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. Signed by the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters, Dean Jimuel C. Naval, and the Associate Dean for Research, Creative Work, and Publication, uh, Professor Jason D. Petras. Thank you, um, Sir Nobuo. Thank you.
next talk. We'll also, we would also want to present and award the Certificate of Appreciation to Anushka Rajendran, Rajendran for also presenting um, in this roundtable discussion. Given today, um, March 15, 2022, at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, also signed by our Dean, Jemuel C. Naval, and Associate Dean, Jason D. Petras. Thank you very much as well, Ms. Anushka Rajendran. Thank you so much. And most especially, um, we would also want to present our Certificate of Appreciation to Professor Tessa Maria Guazon for moderating this roundtable discussion, also signed by our Dean, Jemuel C. Naval, and Associate Dean, Jason D. Petras. Thank you very much, Professor Guazon. Thank you to uh, Louis. Again, thank you, Nobuo, uh, Anushka, and we also thank Lipi. Um, I would like to remind everyone uh, to answer the evaluation form. I think the link has been shared to you for our attendees. This is for our attendees if you wish to receive certificates. Um, the next Bahaginan Research Forum will happen in April, and it will be hosted by the Department of English and Comparative Literature of the College of Arts and Letters. Please follow um, the College of Arts and Letters uh, social media pages for updates. Again, we would like to thank the Office of Initiatives for Culture and the Arts and the Department of Art Studies. And to everyone who spent time with us this afternoon, for your support of the project. I think as a closing uh, gesture, uh, may I request everyone on Zoom to uh, turn on their videos so we can have a photo together. Louis, will you take the photo? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so okay. we'll have our uh, group photo now. Thank you for joining us. Okay. And I hope you can also join uh, future uh, lectures and events for the College of Arts and Letters Bahagina Research uh, Forum. Okay, thank you, Professor Guazon. So on count of three, I'll take a screenshot of our view. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. All right, all done. Thank you, Professor Guazon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, LK, Louis. Thank you so much, Thank Jason, you. for the support. Nabuwa and Anushka, I miss you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we should meet uh, physically. Yes, yes, so, I hope okay. so. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.